It is a matter of record that the metal and engineering industries have underperformed in recent years. The statistics reveals this quite clearly. In consequence, I would contend that one of the goals of this annual engagement is to identify reasons for our stagnation and with that in mind, suggest remedial action with a view to the prevention of recurrence, thus help reignite economic growth, preferably in a more sustainable way. It may also help to espouse an attitude orientated towards solution seeking rather than serially finding fault. This is not to discourage the raising of critical voices where such are warranted. Criticism and multiplicity of views constitute the engine and leitmotif of progress. How do we ramp up manufacturing and thus create jobs? This is the question that faces many of you today. Well, for starters, we need less regulation, not more. We need incentives to grow and create jobs, robust and attractive incentives. We need local governments to come on board and rebate manufacturers so they can succeed. We need government to quit making grand speeches that promise a better tomorrow, but behind the scenes deepen the state hand in industry. Ladies and gentlemen, I strongly believe that with the right people in place, policy certainty, and treating business as government's partner and not enemy, we can see manufacturing employ hundreds of thousands of South Africans once again. We have seen a continuous erosion of manufacturing capacity in our economy of the last 20 years. If you listen to, and I'm a big fan of his work, Danny Roderick, professor at Harvard University and MIT, who speaks about the concept of premature deindustrialization. And again, provocative point is that at our, I think South Africa right now, and there are other examples, the exception to this general statement I'm going to make now is typically the Asia region. But at our current rate of GDP per capita, we should not have been deindustrialized at the trend we have. To succeed, you need industrialization. Without industrialization, you have, I would argue, and this is a phrase we often hear, you have baked in non-inclusive growth models. Because no industry, no sector, or no composition of GDP is as effective as generating employment and diffusing wealth into a society than manufacturing. The market share of South African producers in the South African market. That I nearly, I sat and looked at this graph for quite a while because it is actually astonishing what has happened and the potential that could have happened if, if, uh, if the trends weren't there. We are 50% driven, roughly, by the domestic market, mining, motor, and construction, and 50% by export. So if you have that framework in your mind, let me show you what has happened with the South African market. That top line above the red is the total domestic market for metals and engineering. In 2010 numbers, so you have to uh, multiply by, by 1.3, that gives you the, the actual number. The blue is the South African producer's share of that market. And that black line is on this axis, the percentage of the market that we are actually uh, con controlling. Now, to give you an idea in numbers, in, in last year, if we kept the 65% that we had here, we would have had production at 100 billion more on 400 billion. That's a huge amount, more than what we have now. And that would have meant something like 50 or 70,000, 70,000 extra job opportunities. We hope that as um, our, our reindustrialization process um, um, gains traction, um, that uh, there will be a structural shift and change um, with regard to import substitution, where um, input materials as well as capital equipment um, starts to be manufactured and, and sourced from our home ground. 
We're living in trying times, obviously, extremely trying times. Um, if we are internally divided, we will never be internationally competitive. If we see successful reindustrialization as a partnership between the private and the public sector, we've got to get in the room and talk to each other about what that partnership means, including with respect to import substitution. I agree, absolutely. Throwing stones at each other in the way that happens at Sifsa in Darbas is not the way to go.